Our call to worship this morning. A voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. And a very warm welcome to our streamline, to our streamline service from the Dales United Reformed Church. And I welcome you all in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Well, today we light our first Advent, cal uh, Advent candle, and we've got Val with us today, and she's going to come and light the candle for us. Thank you, Val. She's told us this is the first time she's lit the Advent candle, so thank you very much, Val. So let us pray. Loving God, as we light this candle, we pray that you will shine your light of hope into our hearts and into the world. Amen. Well, I don't know about you, but it's been about 12 months since our last Advent, and sometimes everything gets in the way and we've got a lot of things in our Christian calendar. So I thought that I'd just remind us what Advent is. Now, Ad Advent is the, se uh, is the season four weeks before Christmas. And in these weeks, we prepare for the coming of Christ. It begins on Sunday, the nearest to the 30th of November, Advent is also a time of preparation for the celebrations of the birth of Jesus. And its name comes from Latin, and it's a Latin word, word called Adventus, which means coming. Well, we've got our first worship song today, and it's called Light Up the Fire. So let us pray. Loving God, we praise you again for this season of Advent, this time of preparation, for thanksgiving, for challenge and reflection. Open our hearts to all you would say now and help us to listen, Lord. 
This is a time for looking back and remembering the birth of your son, light into our darkness. A time for looking forward and anticipating his coming again and his return to establish your kingdom and rule in your name. Above all, a time for the present moment, for examining our lives, searching our hearts and exploring your word and renewing our faith. A time to recognise more fully that Jesus is with us each moment of every day, now and always. For your coming and coming again in Christ, we thank you. So may we truly celebrate Advent of your Son, Jesus Christ. Equip us, Lord, for a different time to celebrate. Things may be cancelled, but your love is not one of them. Let your light shine in the darkness, and may the miracle of Advent shine through into our lives and shine in our communities. And so let us say together, the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I heard the story of three trees many, many years ago. And uh, that story just stuck in my head. And then I started looking for it not long back, but it was in the form of a children's story. And as I was preparing the service for this week, that story just dropped in my mind again. So I thought I'd share it with you this morning. And like I said, it is called The Three Trees. Once upon a mountaintop, three little trees stood and dreamt of what they wanted to become when they grew up. The first tree looked up at the stars and said, I want to hold treasure. I want to be covered with gold and filled with precious stones. I'll be the most beautiful treasure chest in all the world. The second little tree looked at the small stream trickling by on its way to the ocean. I want to be travelling mighty waters and carrying powerful kings. I'll be the strongest ship in the world. Now the third little tree looked down onto the valley below, where busy men and women worked in a busy town. I don't want to leave the mountain top at all. I want to grow so tall that when people stop to look at me, they'll raise their eyes to heaven and they'll think of God. I will be the tallest tree in the world. While well, years passed and rain came, the sun shone and the little trees grew tall. One day, three woodcutters climbed the mountain. The first woodcutter looked at the first tree and said, This tree is absolutely beautiful. It is perfect for me. With a swoop of his shining axe, the first tree fell. Now I, sh now I shall be made into a beautiful chest. I shall old beautiful treasure, the first tree said. The second woodcutter looked at the second tree and said, This tree is strong. It is perfect for me. With a swoop of his shining axe, the second tree fell. Now I shall sail mighty waters, thought the second tree. I shall be a strong ship for mighty kings. The third tree fell as her heart, and her heart sank when the last woodcutter looked at her way. The tree stood straight and tall and pointed bravely to heaven. But the woodcutter never even looked up. Any kind of tree will do for me, he muttered. With a swoop of his shining axe, the third tree fell. 
The first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought it to a carpenter's shop. But the carpenter began to carve the tree into a feed box for the animals. The once beautiful tree was not covered with gold nor with treasure. She was coated with sawdust and filled with hay for hungry farm animals. The second tree smiled when the woodcutter took her to the shipyard, but no mighty sailing ship was made that day. Instead, that once strong tree was hammered and sawed into a simple fishing boat. She was too small, too weak to sail on the ocean and even in the river for that matter. Instead, she was taken to a little lake. The third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beams and left her then in the lumberyard. What happened to that once tall tree, she wondered. All I ever wanted was to stay on the mountain top and I wanted to point to God. Many, many days and nights passed. The, tree, the three trees nearly forgot their dreams. But one night, a golden starlight poured over the first tree as a young woman placed her newborn baby in the feed box. I wish I could make a cradle for him, her husband whispered. The mother squeezed his hand and smiled as the starlight shone on the smooth, sturdy wood. This manger, this manger is beautiful, she said. And suddenly the first tree knew she was holding the greatest treasure in all the world. One evening a tired traveller and his friends crowded into an old fishing boat. The traveller fell asleep as the second tree quietly sailed out onto the lake. Soon the thunder thrash stormed and the sea rose around him. The little tree shuddered. She, sh she knew she did not have the strength to carry as many passengers safely through. With the wind and with the rain beating against her. The tired man awakened. He stood up, stretched out his hand and said, Peace. The storm stopped as quickly as it had begun. And suddenly the second tree knew she was carrying the king of heaven and earth. Well, one Friday morning, the third tree was, was startled when her beams were yanked from the forgotten wood pile. She flinched as she was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. She shuddered when the soldiers nailed a man's hands to her. She felt ugly and harsh and cruel. But on the Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth rumbled with joy beneath her, the third tree knew that God's love had changed everything. It had made the third tree strong. And every time people thought of that third tree, they would think of God. That is better than being the tallest tree in all the world. The next time you feel down because you didn't get what you want, sit tight and be happy because God is thinking of something better to give you. And that is written by an unknown source. Well, we've got some more music to listen to now and it's called These Are The Days Of A Shining like the sun at the 
trumpet call Lift your voice It's the year of Jubilee And out of Zion's hill Salvation comes And these are the days of Ezekiel the dry bones becoming as flesh And these are the days of your servant David Rebuilding a temple of praise And these are the days of the harvest The fields are all white in the world And we are the laborers in your vineyard of the Lord, behold He comes, riding on a cloud, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes, behold He comes, riding on a cloud, shining like the sun, at the trumpet Lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee And out of Zion's hill salvation comes There is no God like Jehovah 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 there is no God like Jehovah, 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 there is no God like Jehovah. Behold he comes, riding on a cloud, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, lift your voice. The year of Jubilee And out of Zion's hill Salvation comes Behold He comes Riding on a cloud Shining like the sun At the trumpet call Lift your voice It's the year of Jubilee And out of Zion's hill Salvation I enjoyed that. Just got to remember we can't sing, but you can sing at home if you want to. Now, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank Karen, who is streamlining this service today. And I'd also like to thank Val, who's come today to light the candle, and now she's going to come and do some readings for us. Thank you, Val. Right, it's Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and then Matthew 3 verse, chapter 3 verses 1 to 12. A child is born to us, a son is given to us and he will be our ruler. He will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Eternal Father, the Prince of Peace. At that time, the Baptist came to the... At that time, John the Baptist came to the desert of Judea and started preaching. Turn away from your sins, he said, because the kingdom of heaven is near. John was the man the prophet Isaiah was talking about when he said, Someone is shouting in the desert, prepare a road for the Lord, make a path for him to travel. John's clothes were made of camel hair. He wore a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey people came to him from Jerusalem, from the whole province of Judea, and from all the country near the River Jordan. They confessed their sins, and he baptized them in the Jordan. When John saw many Pharisees and Sadducees come in to him to be baptized, he said to them, you snakes, who told you that you could escape from the punishment God is about to send? Do those things that will show that you have returned from your sins. 
and don't think you can escape punishment by saying that Abraham is your ancestor. I tell you that God can take these stones and make descendants for Abraham. The axe is ready to cut down the trees at the roots. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water to show that you have repented, but the one who will come after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He is much greater than I am, and I am not good enough even to carry his sandals. He has his winnowing shovel with him to thresh out all the grain. He will gather his wheat into the barn, and he will burn the chaff in a fire that will never go out. Amen. Well, when I looked on the lectionary reading for the first Advent Sunday service, I wasn't keen on the reading at all, and it really didn't feel right, it didn't help. So I was stumped. What do I do? Do we have a sermon today or don't we? So I had to just sit back and think, and think about what Advent meant to me, and who reminded me of Advent. Well, the reading from Isaiah sets the tone. For to us a child is born, to us a child is given. God is giving Jesus to us. The government will will be on his shoulders. So it's on Jesus' shoulders. He is our protector and he takes the responsibility. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Some wonderful soothing words from the book of Isaiah. The prophecy came to pass and Mary, mother of Jesus, found out she was expecting a child. Jesus was on the way and he did have a safe arrival. He was born in a manger. So Mary was one of the main people expecting she was one of the main ones looking forward to the coming of Jesus and I think Mary is very prominent in the time of Advent but there is someone else who rushes through my mind someone else that is in that mix someone who jumped for joy in his mother's womb when Mary went near and that person was John the Baptist He was just six months older than Jesus. His mum Elizabeth was Mary's cousin and both mums came from different age scales. Elizabeth was married to Zachariah. She was unable to have any children and she was beyond childbearing age, which we think she was about 60 years old. She became pregnant at that point with a baby boy, John. On the other hand, we have Mary, who is between 16 and 18 years old, when she had Jesus. At that point, she was engaged to Joseph, and Jesus was on the way. After encounters with angels, as we read through our scriptures, we find out that Joseph went on to marry Mary. There is no mention of John and Jesus' relationship growing up together, but John the Baptist had a ministry, and of all the places, it was a ministry in the desert. People flocked to that place to repent and be baptised by John. John was that voice calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. He was a strange man. He was a bit of an odd bod. His clothes were made of camel hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. The food he had as well was also very strange. He liked his locusts and his wild honey. Jesus went to John to be baptised in the River Jordan, and all at that very moment was revealed. The dove and the voice from the sky confirming Jesus being God's son. After his baptism, Jesus was more than happy to to become a disciple of John's. But John knew better. He said, I baptise with water for repentance. 
but you that come after me are more powerful than I. Jesus will baptise with the Holy Spirit and fire. John knew after, after baptising Jesus that he had truly prepared the way for him. He decided that Jesus must go forward and Jesus must grow in his ministry, whereas it was time for John to diminish. Even at the end of the time of Jesus, he still took, stuck to the teachings of John, where he would tell people to repent and go forward for forgiveness of sins. Both John and Jesus were, were united in their callings. There is no doubt about it. John was a strong mentor to Jesus. When Jesus heard that John had been beheaded, all he wanted to do was absolutely withdraw. But it was the crowds that urged Jesus on to carry on, to carry on with his ministry. Sometimes all of us have that dear friend like John the Baptist. They're our backbone. They're our friend, they're our comfort, they're our encourager. But sadly, they can only take us so far. Along my journey, I think of many dear friends who have encouraged me. I trusted them and they could only take me so far in my ministry. I had a very, very dear friend that springs to mind and it was a gentleman, and I've changed his name because I've not asked him if I could tell this story, so I've changed his name to Sid. And he helped me find my calling. We was offered one day to go to a leadership course, and, this, and on this course was a gentleman called John Maxwell. Now, back then, the tickets were £50, and this was about 15 years ago. And it was a lot of money for us to pay. I personally couldn't afford it, but thank goodness the church paid for us. Now, Sid went with me on this uh, leaders, leaders' Day to learn the way of, of leadership, and he absolutely ate it every minute. He couldn't wait to get home, but there was I on that day, and I was hanging on every word. Later on, I changed denominations, and I can remember Sid said to me, you would be better now going on your own, Amanda. I will only hold you back. Now, leadership was not for him. Now, weeks before, I had gone to a church and I had listened to a lady who gave a sermon and her sermon was about John the Baptist. And the sermon said that there are people in your life and they make a wonderful impact, but they can only take you so far. After me and my friend parted our ways, I felt sadness, knowing that we wouldn't be going to church together anymore. We wouldn't be going to them conferences anymore that he absolutely did not like. But we do have mentors in our life. We do have people that come alongside us we do have people that offer discipleship, that help us, that guide us, that support us, and they encourage us to carry on. John was that person who not only helped and supported Jesus, but prepared the way for him, put him on the path of his ministry, and confirmed to Jesus who he was, the son of the living God. John the Baptist would be the first in line when it comes to Advent for me. He believed in the coming of the Messiah. He believed in the Holy One. He believed in the Deliverer. He believed in the Bridegroom, faithful and true, the High Priest, the God of I Am. He believed in Emmanuel, King of Kings. He believed in the light of the world and much, much more. This year has been a different, but the message of Jesus Christ is not. For Christians, the beginning of each new year begins at Advent, when we decide to celebrate Jesus' birth on earth and when Jesus will come again. 
This preparation reminds us of a reason for hope, a fresh start, a time to reflect. At Advent, we are assured that Jesus keeps his promise. For on that first Christmas, he sent his only son, Jesus, to die for us and save humanity. The death and resurrection of this one man is at the heart of the Christian faith. The thought of Advent are for those John the Baptist out there helping others go forward. If we think of the John the Baptist in people's lives, if we think of the doctors and the nurses working so hard, timeless and timeless again, healing people at the hospitals, if we think of the police keeping us safe, if we think of the teachers and the shop workers, the post and the mail services, if we think of the factory workers, the research workers endlessly trying to get a vaccine for coronavirus, people who are preparing a way for a safer future, the people who are God's hands and their feet, and they, f they are fueled by purpose for mankind, and they're obeying their call. Now I've picked a hymn for us to listen to now, and it is called Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. Till the Son of God 
absolutely beautiful. So let us pray. So let us pray. Holy God, ever with us and ever on our way towards us, we look to you this Advent, willing your kingdom to come, but knowing it's not ours to take. So come to us in the many guise of love. Meet our longing, enter our waiting, give life to our hoping. Your kingdom come and your will be done. Amen. And now we end the service today with a blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.